So welcome back everybody. Uh, today we're going to be looking at doing advanced 3D engraving on the Glowforge and we're going to use this image here of this wonderful looking couple in this back of this pickup truck and we're going to take a look at some of the things that need to be corrected, uh, how we can enhance this and make it look way better when we do the engraving. So first thing I'm noticing is that the horizon line is not straight and the sky is going to need an additional little bit of sky added to it because for the final output on this particular one I'm going to be doing it at 14 inches wide by 11 inches tall. Um, and we'll talk a bit about that a little later on as well uh, on how it fits into the Glowforge. So first of all let's bring up the crop tool. We're going to select this and Alright, so we've got the crop tool here, and the first thing I'm going to do is set my selection width and height. So we want this to be, as I said, 14 inches by 11 inches at 300 pixels per inch. And I'm going to rotate it. Now, you notice the grid here, so what we do is utilize the grid to make sure that the horizon line is straight. And make sure that the content aware checkbox is checked off here. And as I drag this out to get a nicer crop, because I do want to have as much of the background uh, original background in this image as possible just to make it a nicer image. Also pay attention to where these grid lines are. Um, the subject should be sort of falling in line with these intersections or along these lines just for the nicest uh, uh, presentation. Um, it's using basically the rule of thirds here and uh, so we want to place the faces as close to that line as possible just to have it look its best. All right, so we've got that pretty much where I want it and I'm just gonna hit enter. And what it's gonna do is it's going to use content aware to fill this in and there we go. Uh, I think it filled in a little bit at the bottom there as well. So now we've got a straight horizon line and we'll just zoom in on that. Okay, so let's have a quick peek here. One of the things I noticed about this image, uh, it's quite grainy. I'm assuming it was taken at a high ISO. And so one of the things that we want to do first is we're going to get rid of a little bit of that grain before we end up doing our sharpening. So let's go into filter. Let's go down to blur, Gaussian blur. And let's just start playing with this and find the sweet spot. So I'm just going to zoom in on that and set it to zero. And let's try 0.5. That's actually pretty good. What we don't want to do is obliterate the details too much, right? So if I look at the face here, I'm going to turn this on and off. We can see it is getting a little bit blurry. But what we don't want to do is sharpen the grain. So I think we'll go with, well, let's try 0.4, just for giggles. That's actually not too bad either. Let's try 0.4 for now. All right, so there we go. And the other thing I notice as well is there's quite a bit of noise, color noise, in his shirt here. So I'm not sure what uh, was used to take this photograph, but uh, there is quite a bit of color noise in here. I'm assuming he's wearing a gray shirt, not a purple shirt, but maybe he is, who knows. Anyway, so let's just zoom out, take a quick look. There's actually a really nice tonal gradation throughout this image. Um, some of the things that we want to make stand out, which looks really cool in 3D, if we can, is like the tread pattern on the tires, um, any sort of uh, details in the wheels and that sort of thing. Um, 
you know, these lines across the fenders, all that sort of stuff. Anything that we can make stand out will just really impact the photo a lot more. And so let's just first of all zoom in on the tire and just see how it's looking. So we're going to do a lot of this work actually in color first and then we'll switch over to gray afterwards. So the first thing we're going to do is go into the dodge and burn tool and right now we're going to we're going to dodge. So if I hold down the option or alt key um, we're going to lighten up the midtones. Just start bringing those out a little bit more. And it's totally okay. We're seeing almost like reflection off the uh, the red off the truck. And that's okay. That's, that's going to disappear a little bit later on as we uh, go through the process. So I think I'm pretty good with that. Maybe just go in a little bit more finite here along the edge. All right, and we're going to do quite a bit of selective blurring, sharpening, all that sort of thing. Um, and f for reasons that I will discuss here shortly. We do have fairly shallow depth of field. Um, so as the focal plane shifts farther away, things get blurrier. Um, but we want anything that is in focus to be nice and sharp. The other thing we could do, just for fun, is take the old Saskatchewan license plate here and we're going to darken the numbers a bit. So we're going to leave it on burn. Whoop. Let's go into shadows and let's make this just a little bit smaller. And let's just burn that in a little bit. Now the reason I'm doing this in color is because I don't want to throw away any more data of the image uh, than necessary. So as soon as I switch it from color to black and white, we're throwing away quite a bit of data. So we'll do as much as we can in color here first. So I'm going to sharpen up this land of the living skies. So let's just go in and do a selection of that area. Let's go filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. And we're going to try and bring back. So let's set the threshold about five. Set the radius fairly low. Let's just start pushing the amount up. Let's bring that back. What we don't want to do is get the noise coming back in. So actually if I hide the edges, we'll be able to see whether or not the noise is becoming uh, sharp again. And we don't want that. Just find whatever looks good to your eye. That's pretty good. All right. I'm just going to deselect that. Now, if we wanted to, we could go in and muck with the treads on his feet and that sort of thing. I think I will go into the dodge and burn tool here. And I'm just going to bring out a little bit of the shadow detail. So let's set the exposure down to 20 make the brush a little bigger whoops and let's just bring out his shoe a little bit here that's pretty good all right 
The other thing I want to do is I want to sharpen their eyes. Um, if you've watched my previous videos, you'll know the importance of having sharp eyes. Um, that's usually where we look first when we're looking at people as the subject. We're going to look at their eyes first. And we'll really notice if the eyes are not sharp. So I'm going to use a combination of dodge and burn here. Um, I'm going to go into the midtones, reduce the brush down. And just so you know what I'm doing, I'm going to switch this over to dodge. And it's going to go in around the pupil. And let's even push exposure up to 20. And I'm just going to make his pupils pop a little more by adding some contrast. Between the iris and the pupil. All right, and then I'm also going to lighten the white of his eyes a little bit. Because right now they're kind of a pinky tan color. And I'm going to do the same thing for her. Let's go in and lighten those irises. You want to be careful here because you can quickly make people look possessed and we don't want to do that. We also don't want to affect the catch lights in their eyes too much and if they don't have catch lights we're going to add them in and we'll do that in a little bit here. All right, that's pretty good. All right. Okay, so I'm actually pretty happy with this right now. Um, so let's go in and we're going to do an unsharp mask to the whole entire thing and just see what happens. That's so there's with and without. That's actually pretty good. So let's go with that. All right, now let's switch over to image, adjustment, black and white. And we're gonna just start adjusting the tones because we wanna bring out all the detail in that truck. It's got a lot of patina and we want to make sure that that stands out. And if we have to, we'll go in and mask the subjects here. And in fact, let's just do that anyway right now. We're going to mask out their faces and their arms um, so that we can do adjustments to everything else without affecting their skin tones. So the easiest way to do that, uh, I find, is just to do a combination of selections in Magic Wand. So if I hold the shift key down each time I click, I'm going to add to the selection. And I'll go in with the lasso tool here right away and do a little bit more finite selection masking. Now there's plenty of ways to do masking. You can do it with the selection brush. Uh, you can try using the automatic selection tools. I just find this way works best for me. You can do it however you like. Now sometimes if the subject is against a light background, um, you'll run into an issue where the selection goes out of the boundaries of the person and into the lighter background. And that can be controlled somewhat with the uh, tolerance up here. 
Right now I've got it set at 15. Uh, I believe the default is 32. Um, and I find sometimes that gets a little out of hand when it's selecting. It goes too far outside the boundaries that I'm looking for. So if you drop that tolerance down, um, say if you dropped it to 1 and you clicked on a white area, it's going to only select things that are 100% white. Um, and it'll sort of avoid everything else. Now if there's any sort of noise in the background, you'll, you'll only probably select one pixel. Um, so you want to be a little bit careful with that. Or just be aware of how it responds. That's pretty good. Okay, now we're just going to try a little trick here and see if it works. We're going to go to select, grow. Now you can see it's jumped into the truck here, but if I hold the option alt key and click in there, I can actually deselect parts of the truck. Or I could just take the lasso tool here and again hold the the option or alt key and just draw around that and it will deselect it. I'm going to go in here and deselect this. It'll be super precise. That's looking not too bad. So I want the whole face selected, so hold that shift key down. Just do a little bit more of a manual selection here. Oop, I'm not sure why I just did that. I went outside the hair or into the hair. So I don't want to do that. It's okay if the hair gets slightly adjusted. At least for, for now. Let's go in and deselect this area. Uh, I don't see anything else weird. Let's just clean this up. All right. Now what I'm going to do is go up to select. I'm going to invert that selection. So now everything but these areas are selected. So you can see that there's the marching ants out on the border here. So now when I go and I do a adjustment, it's only going to adjust everything but their faces. So let's go to black and white. And you can see their faces are left alone. And I'm going to just do some... Adjusting here. Now, in this particular case, uh, because there's it's a, a cloudless sky, I'm actually going to end up blowing out the sky entirely, and we're going to utilize the grain in the wood to actually give the appearance of clouds uh, to a certain degree. If you've got a nice species of wood that has a lot of uh, a lot of grain pattern in it you can utilize that in very interesting ways. Um, be creative about it. So if we can see we're, we're making these adjustments here, it's bringing out his, his pants, which is okay. All right. Now we're going to make some big adjustments, I think, to his shirt and possibly to her dress because they were quite dark. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that. The more patterns and interesting uh, sort of modeling that you can get, um, makes for a much more interesting engrave. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. So we're going to say OK. I'm going to inverse the selection again. So we're going to go back to their faces. All right, so go back to select inverse. 
And now we're only going to be affecting the faces, but I'm going to do one minor thing here. I'm going to expand my selection slightly. So we're going to go to Modify, Expand, and we're going to expand it by one pixel. All right, that's just to get rid of any sort of... Uh, edge where the color might have bled over the boundary. So if I hide this, it's still selected. Okay. I'm going to first hold the option key down, go to image, adjustment, black and white, and this is going to apply the exact same settings as I previously applied. Okay, so now you can see everything looks the same but I can be a bit more selective. You see, if I want the skin to not be too blown out or I want to darken it, I want to lighten it, I can do that. And it's not going to it's not going to be too dramatic. We want to bring as much detail as possible. I prefer, when I'm doing engravings, I prefer to have the skin as blown out close to white as possible while still maintaining definition. Because, you know, we, we look at skin a certain way because obviously we're, we're humans. Um, it can be somewhat disconcerting if the wood is a darker wood or it's got quite a bit of grain and that is also sort of adding into the mix it makes the skin tones look dark or a little bit weird now there's also an argument to be made with uh, you know people with darker skin or who aren't fair skinned so you just sort of have to use your uh, use your your skill or or your your uh, discretion to figure out what's the best look for you. And I'm actually, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. We'll do a little bit of dodging and burning in their faces here right away. Nothing extreme because it's actually pretty well exposed. So I'm just going to say OK. Now it's still selected. I'm going to keep that selection for the time being. And I'm going to go into here to dodge and burn. Uh, right now I have the dodge tool, which means anything that I paint is going to get lighter. And if I hold the Option key or the L key down, it's going to make things darker. So I can be somewhat selective and it'll use whatever exposure setting I have up here. So let's set this to 10. And let's just get in a little bit closer here and see what we can do with this. So I think I'd like to make the, uh, the bridge line on the nose a little bit darker. So I'm holding the Option key down and I'm just going to paint on there. Now these are very, very subtle adjustments. Your mileage may vary, but I really encourage you to make very, very minor subtle adjustments until you have a really good understanding of how it's affected in your engraving. So I'm just lightening up the cheekbone. Let's go into mid-tones here actually. So we'll make a bigger difference. So just doing some selective lightening and darkening. I want the cheekbones to be emphasized. And pay close attention to which way the light is coming in. So it's coming in from the uh, right side here. Let's go around the Adam's apple. 
Same thing over here. Just bring in the shadow a little bit on the inside of the nose and the inside of the brow. I tend to like to make female skin a little bit brighter and bring out the highlights more. So they have that nice healthy glow, as the women like to say. And she has a thinner lip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a small brush and I'm going to just darken this up a little bit higher. And I always like to lighten the teeth if there's teeth being shown. Now she shows a lot of gum. Uh, her gum line. So I'm just going to darken the gum line a little bit because it it gets really bright and it makes her look like she has kind of a snarl going on. And I'm going to go into the highlights and do the same thing. Just darken it a little bit. That'll also have the effect of making her lip look a little bit fuller. Because gums are pink, they're not white. Just remember that. There, giving her a nice uh, dental cleaning. Just be careful, do things modestly. So a larger brush and a smaller exposure amount, just for that fine adjustment. Whoops. Let's go back to the dodge. There we go. Now you can see how the grain is popping back in here. So what we can do now is we can go to the blur tool and we'll make sure that strength is set to 50%. And then we're just going to go and selectively blur all right same thing over here and we are going to do some more extreme unsharp masking which if we don't blur some of these now it's going to end up over exaggerating it later even more than I want that's actually pretty good let's just do a little bit in here alright now I would like to oh we're gonna do some lightening to the arms as well so let's go back to the dodge and burn tool This will give her a little bit of muscle definition. <laughs> Remember, follow the natural contours. Pay close attention to how the shadow and highlights fall off. That's very important. There we go. You want to be careful, don't bring it out too much or you'll make them look like skeletons. Give them skeleton hands. Back to the midtones. 
Now, if you're seeing things like she's got some blemishes and bruising on her legs, let's go ahead and fix that so we can use the clone stamp tool, uh, which I find works the best. Set it to a low value and just sort of paint over that. That's pretty good. Alright. Dodge and burn tool. Let's bring back the whoop. Let's bring back the wheat a little bit. So I'm in tones. Just darkening it ever so slightly. And then I'm going to go in and back to highlights and just lighten this plate a little bit. Alright. Okay. And I'm going to do an overall lightening of the ground as well. Because I find that that really makes the image pop, especially on a gravel road. So with the dodge and burn tool selected, let's go with a nice big brush. And got the highlights selected. Let's just bring this up to like 14. And I'm going to start affecting the highlights a bit. And then I'm going to switch over to the midtones. And then switch back to the shadows. And with the shadows, I'm going to actually darken. So I'm holding the Option key down, or Alt key. And I'm just going to darken those shadows a bit. All right. And in the truck here, I just want to lighten this up a little bit as well. Let's go with a bit smaller brush. And switch to mid-tones. And let's just lighten that a little bit. Just a little bit. So you can see the difference there. And the same thing over here. And in here, again, you can just see it's just subtle, subtle, subtle. Same thing in this area here. Okay, now the sky. We're going to do a selection on the sky. So back to the, uh, to the magic wand tool. I'm going to put this up to 32. Select the sky, and you can see it's selected most of the sky, but it's also selected part of the truck here. Okay, so we're going to go with the lasso tool, and I'm just going to manually drop out that selection. And I'm going to select in here and in here. But what I don't want to do is completely obliterate this nice crack in the windshield. <laughs> I suppose we could fix it if we wanted to, but that wouldn't be authentic. Just trying to get close. All right. So if I hold the Option key or the Alt key down when I drag the highlight, you can see that we're blowing it out. Because anything black is, is gray. We're getting rid of all of that. Now it's pure white. Deselect that. Uh, I would say that's pretty darn good. I think I want to lighten the wheat field here a little bit more. So let's go back to the dodge tool. And let's just continue to lighten that up a little bit. Try not to lighten the fence posts too much. All 
That's pretty good. Now, one of the things when we blew out the sky, we ended up with this kind of hard edge here. And we know that's all out of focus. So we're going to go back and select the blur tool. And we're just going to go along the edge with the blur tool and blur this a little bit more. Let's crank this up to 100%. It's totally okay to make this blurry. Because it was blurry. Alright. That's pretty good. Now, the only thing I would say is the taillights should not be white because they were red taillights. So I'm going to go and select the taillight, deselect the tailgate, and we're going to introduce some tone back into that. So let's go to the levels and let's drag the output sliders so that we're putting some gray back in. Let's just hide that. That's pretty good. And deselect. And I'm just going to do some blurring around here. And then I'm going to take a little bit of creative license and use the brush tool. I'm going to set it to a low amount. And I'm just going to paint in some shadow details of what I could would imagine that the tail lights might have. Just so they don't look so flat. Yeah, I'm okay with that. It's just a minor little touch. Sometimes it adds so much to an image. Okay. So now we're going to switch this over to actually being a grayscale image. And this is where things start to make people nervous when doing these types of images. But we're going to go into Unsharp Mask. And we're going to push the radius quite high. And we're going to start to see where a lot of these details come out. We can push the threshold up and then just start to bring it back. That's pretty good. And then we're going to go in and do it one more time, but this time we're going to drop the radius down. We're going to bring the threshold down. We're going to put the amount way up there. You can see the eyes are really popping now. I actually want to go in and just put a little bit of white in her eye on this side. So we'll go with, whoop, so we're going to say OK. And we're going to bring the brush. And we're going to go switch it to white. That's pretty good. Now we're going to do one last blur pass to just sort of smooth some of the roughness. So we're going to go to Gaussian Blur. And we're going to set this really low. 0.2. And then we can go in and do a little bit of selective blurring.
And I think that's all I want to do. All right. Okay, now we're going to go into levels. And we're going to push this up. We're going to go... Let's go to 88. And we can check any final things here. So that's the areas of contrast. We want to increase it. Or, we want to del or diminish it a little bit. We can. Here's our highlights. I don't want to blow out any highlights. That's pretty good though. Alright. And... I'm pretty happy with that. You can also adjust your tone just by adjusting the gamma slider a little bit. Hmm. I think right about... right about there. Now usually when there's a vehicle and it's the front of the vehicle, the grill is showing and I really like to accentuate the grill, but we're looking at the back of the truck here this time. So what I want to do is just come in here and I want to darken the treads, make them quite black uh, so that they go really deep into the wood. So let's set the shadows and then let's, oops, let's go in here and darken them up. Make sure you're using a soft edge brush so that it's a soft transition. Make the brush a little smaller. Mm, I think I'll leave that. Maybe I'll just make it a little bit bigger. Put this down to two. There we go. Alright. That's pretty good. It's just those subtle things that's going to make it pop. So I'm just going around and picking up some some key shadow areas where we can add some depth and just darkening it. Just to add that little bit of punch. lighten up their clothing just a smidge so let's make sure we've got dodge nice big brush we're gonna go into the mid-tones and probably the highlights as well and we're just gonna lighten this up a bit that's probably pretty good all right 
So there's our image. I just want to blend that just a little bit more. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to select the blur tool. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to blur those areas. And there we go. Now, this is uh, one of the more important things when doing 3D. Okay, we're going to go and convert this to bitmap. And we're going to actually change this to 600 pixels. Halftone screen. Uh, 80 lines per inch. Frequency... 35 all right there we go and now we'll take this and save it save it as a PNG we'll call this couple and truck we're gonna This was uh, 14 by 11. And now let's take it into the Glowforge. It really doesn't matter what we set this material to. This, it, for those who don't really have a full understanding of how this works, uh, these are just all presets, uh, basically settings that work well for these particular materials. Um, but even more importantly, it sets a predetermined height and focus uh, for the laser head itself. So we can select any one of these that we want. I'm just going to go with uh, maple. So let's just find thick maple plywood. So I'm using, for, for my 3D engraves, I use either quarter inch or 5 eighth inch sanded pine. Um, this particular piece I put in here, I believe, is 5 8 um, So what I do is I take the tray out of the bottom, and uh, I've got a little stand underneath here that I've set the wood on top of. Uh, and then I just sort of try and center it up as best that I can. Um, we'll make some, some minor adjustments uh, at the Glowforge itself. I can see that it's slightly skewed here at the top. The camera does do some skewing, so it's really just a matter of sort of eyeballing it. What I like to do is use the edge of the lid and look down at the material and just sort of line the edges up uh, of the lid with the edge of the material, and that sort of helps me gauge whether or not it's straight. Um, so I set it to thick maple plywood and then we go in here and we're going to do a set focus. We're going to set the focus to the middle of the material. Very important that you've got the material flat and level inside the machine. So whatever you're going to set it on top of, make sure that that is flat and level. Um, also, take a look at your wood stock to make sure there's no warping in the wood stock, that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and add the artwork. Upload. Let's go find it here. A uh, couple of truck. You've got to like the servers. They're not the speediest even though Glowforge Premium claims that they're fast. So, what do we notice right away? The aspect looks off, right? Well, the reason that is, is because the top area, if you remember, we went to pure white. And when you bring PNGs in, or any bitmaps for that matter, the Glowforge software does not um, respect the dimensions of the file it crops to the closest area where the image starts. Um, so there must be like a little dot or something in here somewhere, and it is pulling, or rather it is 
seeing that as the edge of the image and it's cropping it to that point. But what we do know is we've got dark on edge to edge. So as long as we go in here and we keep this locked and we set the width to 14 inches, that will maintain the proper height. Okay. And I know my stock is 14 inches, but we haven't done a focus yet here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to set focus. And we notice it snaps into view a little bit more here. And I want to bring this down just to the edge of the stock. And it is going to overlap a little bit. That way I don't end up with a crooked edge or anything like that in case my wood's off a little bit. Um, so you can actually see the skewing from the camera just a bit here. I know it's tough to see, um, but you notice it's it's black in here more than it is here. That's the camera. That's not the stock. So the important thing is, is that we try to get the uh, the image as centered on the uh, the stock as possible. And it's okay if the laser runs off the edge. All it's going to do is hit the bottom and scatter um, as long as you're making sure you're wearing your safety glasses so I've got my settings for 3d engraving set as such 600 speed full power very power maximum quality lines per inch at 270 you don't need to go higher than that and one pass and focus height is actually set to auto and there we go so we're gonna burn this and see how it turns out now if you look at the uh, the wood grain here it's going to kind of look like clouds in the background just because of the wood grain it just gives it some interest so yeah so let's uh, send this to run and see what we get now because it is such high resolution it will take a while to process and prepare this. So we'll come back when this is done. Okay, so we're ready to go. It's uh, going to take a lengthy two hours and 51 minutes to run this. And uh, it's gonna complain here that proof grade material is not found. Just ignore it. We know what we're printing here. We're using wood, we're not using some toxic material or anything like that. So let's run the job and uh, see what happens. So here's the finished engraving. Turned out really well. There's a little bit of a light area in through the wood grain here and that of course uh, will get brought out when the engraving's done. You can also notice that the grain opens up in the wood here. That's why you see these horizontal lines running through. That's actually the wood grain that's opened. And that's, you know, the effect of heating the wood. Uh, you know, the moisture comes out and the wood contracts. And then, of course, the grain opens up. If you look in the darker areas here, you can really see how much the three-dimensional effect pops. It, uh, it looks really good. And then of course the wood grain in the, in the sky looks like clouds. And uh, I think that's a really nice effect. So there you go. Uh, turned out the way that we expected. I'm really happy with the end result. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to fire off your questions below in the comment section. Uh, please check out the show notes. There's some important links there. Maybe check out my Patreon. Uh, I'm looking to grow my Patreon quite a bit. And as I do, I will be sharing more and more uh, goodies on there. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Uh, make sure you click the bell so that you get all the notifications. And uh, 
I look forward to the next one. And thank you very much for joining me today. And we'll see you again. Bye for now.